Okay, name Martin Weaver, age 34 years of age, uh, position in the station watch manager. Watch manager is day-to-day -day running of the uh, the crew that we've got here, which is Greenwatch, and of the fire station, really. Uh, so I'm in charge of Greenwatch. I, uh, I sort out what our duties are for the day, uh, put them into practice, and then, then run the shift. Been in the job just over 14 years now. So I joined at 19 years of age, yeah. What inspired me? Um, family, I suppose, but I've, I was never really inspired to be a firefighter. Um, I sort of fell into it, as it were. I was doing my A-levels, um, applied for the fire service as a backup. I was going to go to university and the fire service uh, wrote back to me and said there was no job. So I went through the application process and I just missed out. So I thought that was it. Went to university and I did a year at university. Um, and then out of the blue, they wrote to me and they were running a second course that year and, and said to me, do I want a job? So it came out of the blue and it was a big decision then. Do I carry on with my university course, which I passed the first year of, or do I take the job? And as you can see, I took the job. Lots of traumatic events, lots of uh, people who I've seen who have, have died and had to deal with that. Uh, the one thing that sticks out for me uh, was, it was only a few years ago and it was a, a young lad. And as jobs go, it, it wasn't a major thing. It was a young boy uh, going across the road on his push bike with no lights on. And a car hit him and he got dragged under the car. And he was fine and he was okay. Um, I think he might have broken his leg. So, so compared to some of the jobs we get, it wasn't a major thing. He was going to be fine, he was all right. And it was just something he said to his mum. And, and his mum was there on the scene and he, and he asked his mum, he said, mum, am I going to be disabled? And that really stuck with me because I suppose the difference now because I've got kids of my own. So, so seeing that, and that, that just stuck with me, that did. The career for me, I mean, my wife's in the job as well. So I'm a watch manager here. My wife works in, in control. Um, so she turns us out to the 999 calls. Uh, my dad was a firefighter, so I suppose as a whole it sort of shaped shaped my life as as it were. It's not the be all and end all of my life, but it but it's always been there and it and it always will be there. Okay, this is the uh, the printer, and what this tells us basically, print it out. Every time we get a call, it comes through. And that'll give us instant information. So that's where we get turned out from. The sirens will, the sirens will go off, um, the lights will, lights will all come on. It gives us an incident number, uh, the address of where we're going to, and what it is. This one, for instance, was a lockout. Okay. What we'll do as a crew, we'll take that information, we'll read it, quick briefing to the crew about what it is, and then we'll go on the fire appliances from there. So if you want to come through, I'll show you that. Hey, my name's Alex Taylor. I'm uh, 24 years old, I'm a firefighter. Uh, I was a mechanic and working in retail before. Uh, I didn't really have much sort of drive in my jobs, it was just go to work type thing. Whereas now it's just something I take a lot of pride in and uh, enjoy the job. I was, this is when I was a reta retained firefighter. Uh, it's my first fire call, half nine in the morning, straight out of bed. Uh, it was a factory fire over in the south of the county. I was, uh, it's my first job, I was straight at the deep end. So retained is where you have like a pager, an alerter, and then you respond to the station when they need you. The uh, whole time which we are here is where we, 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 we're here on the station waiting for the calls. Uh, it's probably say RTCs, like road traffic collisions that we've gone to, when you see people that are injured and trapped in a car, but they can't, they can't get out. When you're you know, desperately trying to help someone, that's, that's like the worst part. But saying that's most satisfying as well when you get them out and you know if they, they pull through. Yeah, we've got a number of different fire engines in the base, as you can see. Uh, Frontline appliance is that one there, uh, the PRL pump rescue ladder. Um, that's always on immediate, always got five people on it, and that'll respond to the majority of incidents, anything substantial, house fires, car crashes, things like that. This is its backup, water tender. Um, crew by retained personnel, what that means is they'll come in, they're on alerters, they've got other jobs, other occupations, as and when they get a call, they arrive at the station, they jump on the appliance, put the fire kit on and they go from there. Um, they have to get to the station within five minutes and then they turn out to us from there. So that's second appliance. I've got a TRV, uh, which is in the corner there, or targeted response vehicle. That's got a crew of three on it and that's always on immediate and manned um, from half ten in the morning till half ten at night. 
And what that crew does is they'll attend smaller incidents, things like uh, rubbish fires, car fires, grass fires. So it takes the pressure off of that, which we want to keep free for the bigger jobs, like your house fires and things. Um, we don't want that going to those if we can help it, the smaller things. Um, so that takes those and it leaves the bigger engines free for, for the more serious jobs. And then the, the vehicle at the end is a, a DLU, or Damage Limitation Unit. And what that means is it's a special appliance. Uh, we've got a number of these across the brigade, different types of special appliances. And it does what it says, basically, damage limitation. It carries things such as uh, various different pumping for, for flooding incidents, salvage sheets for, for wrapping things up in, uh, things for soaking up oil and chemical, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And as you can see, it's, it's part funded by the Environment Agency. So, so that will go off. It's not primary crude, so there's no, nobody riding it all the time, but we can make it available. We can get people on it. And if it's required, we can go out to things like that. More environmental things. Any of the appliances you've got here? Um, uh, my name's Craig Brayton. I'm 50 years of age, and I ride at the moment on the TRV, the Targeted Response Vehicle. Uh, we respond to all small fires within the area of Stoke-on-Trent, north of the county. So that's anything from car fires, rubbish fires, grass fires, non-structural non fires. I joined in 1989, so I'm in my 24th year. I'd done an apprenticeship, I was on a, working on a factory, and I just saw the advert in the paper and went for it, and I was very lucky to get in at the time. There was two and a half thousand applicants, and there were 16 jobs, so I was quite lucky to get in. There's, there's funny times and there's sad times, and there's, you know, there's, there's lots of times. I was driving at the time at Longton, and we had a call to a, a property fire and uh, the boss radioed me to send a message that we'd got a, a hammock on fire. And I thought it was quite strange in a house fire that you have a hammock on fire. And I sent the message and it turned out that it was a ham hock in the oven on fire. And I sent it as a hammock on fire, so there we go. So you have to be switched on and listen to what you're being told. But that's, there's loads, I'm sure there is. You could have bad jobs, you could have all sorts really, you could have problems with your family, anything really. Um, we deal with a lot of um, deprivation in Stoke on Trent and there's a lot of um, things that go on within the public domain that the public don't know about as regards, you know, there's a lot of people who are homeless and drug takers and things like that that we have got part of now that we deal with that. Um, a lot of void premises and, you know, Uh, loads and loads of different kit we carry on the fire appliances. Um, each lock has got a different perhaps, theme, if you like. This one, full of rescue equipment. So, road traffic collisions, things like that. This is what we use to cut people out of cars with. Um, we've got small pumps, light portable pumps. There's nothing light about them, uh, which we can take off and we can carry to rivers and things, and we can we can use to to get water that way if we're struggling to get water into the appliance. Uh, various lighting tripods and stabilisation torches. Stabilisation gear. Um, what I mean by stabilisation gear? Road traffic collisions. Uh, the biggest risk to the occupants is spinal injuries. Uh, cars are very good at keeping people, giving them a smooth ride with suspension in the car so they move all over the place, don't they? If you've got a spinal injury, you don't want to be moving all over the place. So what we do is, is use the stabilisation gear to take that to that movement out. One of the most valuable bits of kit we've probably got, I don't mean in price, just as a piece of equipment, is that a thermal imaging camera. Um, house fires, things like that, we can take it in and it just shows us hot spots, what's hot, what's cold, and we can actually use that to see through the smoke. When you can't see anything else, you'll be able to see through there and find, uh, find casualties and things like that. Big hose for putting out big fires. Small hose for putting out small fires. Beaters for putting out grass fires and just various tools that we use. You've got your axes, flashing lights, breaking in tools. You see as you go around the truck as well, you see people's fire kit place ready to go. That's generally where it's left so that people can come to the appliance, chuck it on quickly and away we go. So everybody's got their own way, their own method of leaving the fire kit. You see some of it on the appliance, you'll see some of it hanging up. You see boots on the appliance, you'll see it on the ground. Different for every individual. Right, my name's Guy Volpe. 
I'm 52 years old. I'm a crew manager on the tactic on the targeted response vehicle. And I thought it was a really worthwhile job, uh, something to something to be proud of. A very satisfying career. The, diffi the, the thing I find most difficult is the changing culture which we live in. Um, it seems as if cha things change weekly uh, and uh, what you've done before in a certain way, in a certain manner, suddenly it has to be changed and relearned and reworked. I find things like that difficult. I think at first, I, I, I'm not sure, sometimes I, I, sometimes I think it makes you more reflective on, um, on life and what life holds for you. And sometimes I think you become more blasé. And a young student actually was driving a car and he, he lost control of the car at a bridge. And the car toppled over the road bridge and landed onto the M6 motorway on the outside lane on its side. So when we turned up there, there was a vehicle on its side on lane three, which is the outside of the motorway. And it must have been his lucky day because no one ran into him. And he came out with very, very minor injuries um, incredible really but it was it was unlucky for the student but equally it was very lucky because he could have lost his life and he didn't on that occasion that's uh, unusual I would say an unusual call okay yeah just just this is the kit room everybody's got a couple of pegs each and this is just where we we put all our personal kit when it's not in the fire appliances when it's not drying this is where it lives on a day-to-day -day basis Uh, my name is Daniel Wheeler. I'm a five old-time firefighter, uh, and I'm 26 years old. Uh, first, my first shift was a night shift, uh, and we had a person supported highest fire at Norton Heights, uh, and she was uh, deceased before we got there. It was quite an intense fire. That was my first night shift. I think the most devastating for me is my own personal performance when I don't perform when I haven't performed quite as well as I could have done. For example, the other week we had a, we came across a guy who'd, who'd, who'd come off his bike uh, and we were we gave him first aid at the side of the road and I really struggled to get the neck collar on him just because of the position. And you just harden yourself because you want to be at the top of your game every time. But just due to the circumstances, I couldn't get the neck collar on just because of the position that he was in. Uh, but obviously you learn from it and next time you'll You'll, you'll change and hopefully get things right, but sometimes things don't go right every time. That's just how it is. The most difficult part is dealing with people. Some people are friendly, some people aren't friendly. And when you come across people that are very difficult and don't want your help or are obstructive when you're carrying out your duties, it isn't very nice, because at the end of the day, you're just doing the what's best for people, what you believe that is best for people. Um, and that's it, really. Most joyous moments? Oof, that's a difficult question. I think when I first started and got in the job itself and completed my training course and got to be uh, in a professional career and not just a job where you turn up and you're a number. I'd say probably the most rewarding, the first rewarding part of this job was uh, an RTC on the A500, which is a road traffic collision. And we, um, we rescued three people out of a, a quite serious uh, incident. Uh, and I was casualty carer and I was inside the car with a woman uh, and I looked after her while we extricated the casualties. Well it, it's nice when we do, when, when, when the work we do contributes to a member of the public who is in distress, suddenly that, that anxiety is lifted and it's nice to see them smile and, uh, and what was an emergency is suddenly not an emergency. Those sorts of things are joyous. Uh, when everything's running well and everybody's happy and working well together, that, that's the best feeling. The, the jobs that we go on, uh, obviously it's, it's why, we, why I join, the most exciting part of the job when you're out there, uh, you know, <laughs> you're out in the truck on the blue lights, going to the jobs, you, you know, in the bit of danger, excitement, that's what it's all about for me anyway. Inspiring firefighters, um, be prepared for a long career now, it'll be longer than what it used to be. Um, Work hard, try hard, and uh, once you get the job, stick at it, and uh, you'll have good times, you'll have bad times. And... You can, it is tricky, you know, pretty tricky to get into. Uh, it's a good job that a lot of people want to do. 
obviously in the current climate it's, it's difficult to, there's not many jobs out there so it's making it even harder to get into this particular job but just, you gotta, it's like everything, you've got to keep plugging away at it and fingers crossed if it's a job for you then you'll, uh, you'll, you'll get it. I would say go for it, it's a, it's a great job, it's, it's a challenge, every day is different. Um, the, the best thing about the job is you come to work not knowing what you're going to do that day. You've got a, your brief run of, running of the day, but that can change in an instant. Um, you could be anywhere doing anything, and that's it really. Go for it. Uh, keep trying. Keep trying. You don't get usually, you know, a lot of times you don't get in the first time. I went for several brigades before I, got, I was lucky enough to get into this brigade. Uh, you need to keep trying, and that's it. And every young man and woman, I'm sure, wants to be firefighters. Uh, and, you, and when the, 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 the vehicles turn out, it is quite a proud moment, and people look up to you. Um, so, yeah. I would say uh, do everything you can to join the fire service. It's a, it's a very good career. It pays well. Um, it's got great satisfaction in there. Um, yeah, go for it. Absolutely.